G'day folks, it's equipment autopsy time again and today we have something rather special. This is a battery charging timer, or battery charge timing relay from a very large forklift battery charger. Uh, it's made by AEI in the UK. Main contact rating is 30 amps and it's got a rather nasty looking amount of mercury in there. That little tilt switch there has got a huge amount of mercury in it. That's kind of cool. So we're going to carefully take it apart and see how it works. Um, the rest of the battery charge has been scrapped long ago so got nothing to lose by dismantling this thing. I don't usually do tripod stuff with the camera because the videos end up really big but Let's see how well this goes. That's what I'm limited to. That's why I don't do nice long autopsy videos because it takes forever to edit and upload them. Living in Australia sucks when it comes to internet speed. I can't just upload a 45 minute equipment autopsy like some people can. I don't know how some YouTubers can just fire off two or three 30 minute videos within 12 hours, let alone anything less. It'd take me 12 hours just to do a 30 minute video. So you've got to bear with me on that. I'm going to try and work at a better ISP. Try and carefully remove these ancient screws. I don't know what vintage this was, but it was fairly old. Yeah, it's even got a vacuum tube in it. Well, actually no, it's not. It's part of a vacuum tube of some sort. That's really neat stuff. <laughs> it's almost a shame to dismantle it. It's got a clockwork timer in there, driven by a uh, synchronous motor. can't really tell you what each of the wires do, I just sort of cut it out of the remains of the control panel and that was it. That's where I got the uh, halfway big rectifier pack from. I'll see if I can include a photo of the rectifier pack when I finish this video. But We've got a uh, tilt switch going across these two terminals here which was blue and white. White's also looped around to here which goes up into this vacuum tube thingy and is also connected across to this red one and that red one feeds the synchronous motor to black which is obviously neutral um, and there's some large switches there yeah. I'll have to crack them open and find out what's going on inside so I think you best get the dangerous bit out of the way first We'll put him someplace safe. That's a fair bit of mercury in there. Yeah, you can go in the hazmat pile. Okay, well judging by the light gauge wiring in this thing, I don't think there's a lot of current switching going on in this part of the unit. I think it's just that mercury switch which has the main current handling capacity. Hence why the contacts and the wires were so heavy. So the mercury switch is what opens and closes the circuit but this is all part of the timer these things here are rated in ohms there's 1000 ohms so that's probably a potentiometer and you can see little adjusting screws on each one of them so I'd say they're very large potentiometers um, this vacuum tube thing is a hot wire it says hot wire vacuum tube on it so I don't really know what that does. That might measure current potential going through it. Uh, the more current that's going into the batteries, the hotter that's going to get and the more resistance is going to change. Because I can see resistors at each end. And they look intact. They're wire wound resistors. But I'll carefully disconnect all of this. Let's try 
try and have a closer look at that. So that's the main backing plate. And then we have a little hot wire vacuum tube in there. The resistor there, the resistor there. That synchron motor there is a drive for the timer. Uh, this pin must obviously push down on that or something. It's kind of interesting. fine screwdriver for those ones but there isn't a lot behind it. I'll try and get this vacuum tube out very carefully. Clamps are wide shut. Wired and epoxy. Wonderful. Not exactly using a scalpel either. Right. Spread him out. Two wires going in, which come in from the backing plate, and we have one wire going to one potentiometer and one going to the other. And these two wires here, I think, fed the. No, they didn't feed the synchronous motor. Um, I can't remember where they went, but somebody will probably figure it out. Very interesting vacuum tube. Oops, I'm trying not to lose him. Is it type 700? Oh, yeah, type hot wire vacuum switch. Very interesting. Um, type 700, serial number 100. There's a style. date or something 67 64 very interesting 30th of the 5th no. can't really tell it's interesting nonetheless Yeah, there's a sheet of mica behind all these fine filaments in there. And probably a bimetal strip. And slightly better look at it. And you've got two wires feeding into the top and two going across this resistor, I think. Interesting little apparatus. Definitely one for the collection shelf. Okay, and as for the rest of it, these things are definitely wire-wound variable resistors. 
or oh, sorry, potentiometers. You can move the wiper wherever you want. That's 1,250 ohms, that's 1,000 ohms, that's 1,250 ohms. And that one there. So, yeah. And that's just a nice old school gear motor which I won't destroy. The rest of it's, as you can see it. So it came out of a very old school heavy battery charger. I mean this thing was the size of a fridge. It probably put out 60 something volts, 70 volts at 200 amps. It was one serious battery charger. It had $350 worth of copper in it. And the guy, one of the electric motor guy who works at the scrapyard picked it up. And yeah, he got $250 worth of copper. Sorry, $350 worth of copper out of the damn thing. So it's one serious charger. But that's about all for this one. Mm, that's the rest of my mercury scrap at the moment. A few tilt switches out of uh, instant water heaters for uh, cafeterias, like coffee water heaters. They use a uh, mercury tilt switch in some of the old ones. Copper, copper tanks wrapped in asbestos. So there's probably about 40 grams of mercury in there. Not sure what to do with it. Probably won't throw it away like I did the last lot. If someone's interested in it, might be able to talk a good deal. I know mercury is expensive, so it's a valuable commodity like gold and copper. Um, that's about the end of that one. We're done here, folks. Thanks for watching. I suppose I should make a correction to this. Those aren't resistors on the ends, they're little wire bobbins or tensioners. The wire runs over them and acts as a uh, heating element. So there must be a bimetal strip or something in there too. Interesting.